protic acids are acids that have more than one hydrogen ion. That's the type of acid you used in the titration recently. So when a polyprotic acid reacts with water, it forms hydronium and an anion. But that anion is also a weak acid. So it can form a hydronium ion and another anion. Now, to keep the mathematics simple, we're going to limit our world to ones that have Ka, the first Ka, a whole lot larger than the second Ka. And it's even better if we can keep it bigger than Kw. Otherwise, it gets mathematically messy. So let's take a solution where I have some generic acid, H2A, and 0.1 in one liter of solution. Which of these four substances, the acid, its monoprotic anion, its anion, or the hydronium ion, will be in the highest concentration when it's all at equilibrium? Did you pick the acid? By definition, a weak acid only dissociates by a small amount. So most of the substance in there is going to be H2A. See if you can figure out the next three. Pause and start again when you're ready. Did you get them right? Hydronium then the monoprotic anion, then the negative two anion. Let's take a look at why. I have two rice problems here. And let's just focus on one at a time. The first one is a regular old rice problem. My acid forms hydronium ion and its conjugate base. So I have whatever molarity my acid is, minus x plus x plus x. My equilibrium concentrations are my initial acid minus x, x and x. These two concentrations appear to be equal right now. I said hydronium was higher, so let's take a look at why. There's a second equilibrium going on. Some of that mono, mono anion, the HA minus, is going to form hydronium and the negative two ion. If we get rid of some of our HA and we form these two, we're going to end up with a tiny little bit of A2 minus tiny because this has a very small equilibrium constant, and a little more hydronium than we drew do HA minus. So let's try a sample problem. We can have carbonic acid in water. Let's find the pH of one molar carbonic acid. I have two equilibrium constants. The first one is for losing the first hydrogen, the second one for losing the second hydrogen. There's about a difference of 10,000 between the two, so we can call those pretty different. To solve this problem, the first thing we need to do is figure out what's in there before any chemistry happens. There's carbonic acid, because we put it there, and there's water, because it's a solution. Now. Let's figure out a rice problem to find the pH. This is your standard old rice problem. So pause and find the pH. OK, not only have we found the pH, but we've also figured out hydronium and hydrogen carbonate concentrations. 
Those will be important later. The second step says find the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide. Well, you know that if you know hydronium ion concentration, you can find hydroxide ion concentration. So pause and find that. So did that work out the way you planned? Hydroxide ion is much smaller than hydronium ion. Now let's take a look at what happens if I want to know how much carbonate there is. There's not going to be a lot. Most of it's going to be carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate, but I have a Ka And I have initial concentrations. Note these concentrations are the same as they were on the page before. My change, I'm going to lose some bicarbonate, form some hydronium, and form some carbonate. So here is my equilibrium problem. My Ka is my products over my reactants. Now, because we said that there's a big difference in Ka's, I can actually ignore the plus and minus y's. So 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth over 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth, they cancel out. And I know my carbonate ion concentration. What we find is that the pH is the pH determines what substance there is. That's a terrible drawing. I'm going to try that again. In this chart, my carbonate and my bicarbonate and my carbonic acid are all represented by lines. The carbonic acid is the black line, sorry, the bicarbonate. The percent of the molecules that are bicarbonate increase until we get to about a pH of 8, and then is decrease as we get to higher pHs. As might be expected, the amount of carbonate increases at higher pHs, and the amount of carbonic acid increases at lower pHs. At any pH, I can calculate my fraction of carbonic acid, bicarbonate, or carbonate. But we'll save that for another day. All right, so what we've done is we've figured out the pH, the amount of H3O plus, HCO3 minus, and carbonate. And at the same time, we could figure out hydroxide. Now it's your chance to try something similar with phosphoric acid. The only difference is now I have three Ka's, which means I'm going to need three 
rice problems. Pause the video and see what you can come up with. All right, so for the first one, there's about a thousand difference between first Ka and initial concentration, kind of cheating a little bit. Um, so it's about 8% dissociated. But I can come up with my hydronium ion concentration, my dihydrogen phosphate concentration, and my pH. I use those first two concentrations to set up the next rice problem, where dihydrogen phosphate becomes hydrogen phosphate. Just like in the carbonate carbonic acid problem, the math here is pretty simple. The third one gets a little weird. I know my hydrogen phosphate ion concentration. I know my hydronium ion concentration. It's the same solution. It hasn't changed. And I don't have any phosphate. In this case, I can say 0 0.084 plus Z times Z over 6.8 times 10 to the negative 8 minus Z is my equilibrium constant. But because Z is really small, I can cross this off. That simplifies the math. And th so my phosphate ion concentration, which is Z, it's 3.6 times 10 to the negative 19th molar. There's very little phosphate in there. So what we've seen is for a polyprotic acid, we can find the pH and we can find the concentration of all the different species throughout. So we'll give some more of these a try in your homework.